Hi, I'm Jerry Mahoki, and I'm going to be giving the first part of the presentation for the AISC Steel Bridge Team at Geneva College for 2021. To begin our semester, once we were assigned into groups, we decided to take some time to reorganize portions of the shop. Now, the shop was pretty messy left from last year when they were sent home early, so we decided that since things were everywhere and we had no real inventory of what we had, that we should go through and just take some take a couple weeks to organize organize our materials, figure out where things were, what we had, and take inventory of everything. So that was we had a shop cleanup day early on in the semester where we spent a Saturday just moving things out, throwing things away, recycling some old material we didn't need. And additionally, we moved a bunch of material around. Some of our shelving we moved to the other side of the shop. We cleaned a lot of areas of the shop. And we shortly after that built a large workbench for us to use since our last table was becoming deficient structurally and was pretty old and dirty. So we did that for the first month or so of the semester, just getting things organized and the inventory there helped us with organization right at the back quite a bit. Initially, some of our goals you can see here, our first goal was to meet all the geometric constraints that AISC laid out in the rule book they sent us initially. AISC gives the same rules to every team that they're supposed to follow and because of the pandemic last year, we received the same rules as last year's team and we had to meet the same geometric constraints as that team. The constraints will be discussed in more detail later, but our first goal was to make sure all of our design met those constraints in an efficient way. In the same way, we noticed that looking over old reports and talking to previous members that assembly time was a major cause of failure in a lot of the bridges. And it's not because they didn't know how to assemble it, it's because they didn't have enough time to practice it. So our goal was to complete fabrication at least two to three weeks ahead of time of before the competition so that we would have time to assemble, get things into place where we wanted them and make sure everyone knew how to do what they were doing well and we could do it quickly. We were aiming for 40 minutes, 45 minutes would get us disqualified, so we were trying to get 40 or under. We ended up doing this pretty well later on, but initially this was a struggle for us to get it once we got to that stage. Additionally, from a project management perspective, we laid out a number of tasks and milestones initially and we wanted to hit those in stride pretty well. We ended up doing this pretty well. The milestones were pretty generic, but we had over 70 tasks laid out total that we had to try to hit. And we broke those down into a schedule, into a workflow diagram to make sure we knew where to be, what we needed to do, what tasks we could do at the same time. And that was our, that was our goal there. Also, we wanted to involve some underclassmen. We did this by inviting them to some of our design meetings in the fall, some of our team meetings as well. We got them involved in doing some of the calculations so that they would know how to do that next year. And additionally, we, we let them into the shop, let them help us. They ended up making our dimension box for us for the competition. And they did a lot of help with us in the shop, learning how to use the equipment, use the tools. And since we're all graduating seniors, this was will end up being really helpful for next year's team. And our final goal was to keep the weight down. Now in previous years, the weight of the bridge has been over 500 pounds. And when you have a bridge that heavy, it's just incredibly hard to compete with anyone in the conference. And there's um, a lot of wasted material there and a lot of extra assembly time. So our goal was to keep the weight under 300 pounds this year and try to keep those that assembly simple and quick. Continuing on the project management discussion, we laid out our milestones within the first month of the semester. And you can see some of them here when we got them done. Our first major milestone was to get the final design done. We did that in October and then we moved on to drawings and that took about two months. And we stayed on schedule really well in the fall but because we had limited time on campus during the fall and spring semester because of the longer Christmas break, we wanted to make sure that those drawings were done before we got back in the spring semester so that we could begin fabrication right away and then leave us some time for assembly and practice. Now the fabrication was able to be started right when we got back in the spring semester, so this was something we did really well and we were right on time there. And as you can see, we completed that goal two weeks ahead of time and then we ended up right on time for the completion of our fabrication, which took about a month and a half to two months. Some of our improvements to prior designs including, include favoring welds over bolts and some of the connections, looking over some of the scope of the project we wanted to do in order to reduce weight, in order to improve assembly time, we had to remove some of the bolts from the equation. And since we have the resources to weld well in a lot of areas, and we designed around trying to have welded connections, we wanted to use those as much as possible. Our only restriction was that they had to fit in a certain geometric constraint. No member could be a certain length. 
So we had to make sure that our plates were welded on in a way that they were still the right distance that we weren't going to get disqualified for that. And many, many of the plates were able to decrease about two or three folds in some of them. And this really allows us to save a lot of weight and a lot of assembly time. Additionally, if you drop a bolt or a nut in the competition, it's a 15 second penalty. So the more bolts you have, inherently you increase your risk of getting penalized on competition day. Additionally, we wanted to reduce the excess weight. As I mentioned in previous years, there was about a 500 pound bridge being built and we wanted to stay way under that in order to compete with some of the bridges being built and fabricated professionally. So we kept our members thin and small. We used hollow square sections in order to do that. We kept our model similar to last year's bridge as we'll discuss further in the presentation, but this really helped us to keep that weight down. We also wanted to improve the leg design and the lateral bracing on the end sections. This was done so that the lateral bracing was not too intrusive and it was there enough that it would hold the 50 pound lateral force that was gonna be put on the bridge. Now we ended up having to change this during fabrication because of some additional geometric constraints that was, were going to impede our goal, but this will be discussed further. However, we did improve the leg design as we had less lateral deflection than a lot of bridges have had. We also importantly wanted to maximize the time for assembly practice. A lot of people and bridges have failed because of the assembly requirement. The teams have not been able to have enough time to practice and rehearse building their bridge. And because of that, they're not well prepared to go into competition day and construct it well and efficiently. Without a plan on competition day and a lot of practice, this would have been a disaster even for us. So this was really important for us and we ended up finishing fabrication with three weeks to go before the competition. And we decided that two weeks of assembly would be enough for us. So we painted for a week, let the paint dry so we could have a nice looking bridge with all the members labeled. And once we got through with that in a week, we were able to start practicing and we practiced about seven or eight times and we're gonna discuss the assembly issues and some of the fun we had doing that at a later point in the presentation. Thank you.